Welcome back. In the last video, we looked at microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. And we understood what are the advantages of microservices, what are the disadvantages of microservices, or actually I should say the challenges associated with microservices. And we looked at the solutions which are provided by Docker and Kubernetes at a high level. We looked at Spring Boot, Spring Cloud uh, in depth in the last video. One of the challenges, one of the main challenges with actually taking Spring Cloud to the uh, cloud is that you need to start managing these infrastructure components in the cloud as well. And that's really, really tough. So along with your microservices, you should start managing your API gateways. Instead of focusing on your business requirement, what you do is you'd start focusing on your infrastructure requirements. You'd start focusing on things which the cloud or some tool can provide to you. So the thing is, the concepts like service registry, API gateway, cloud config server, all these are not what drives your business, right? It does not give you any differentiator when it comes to your business. So why should you really focus on them? Whenever we go to cloud, we talk about undifferentiated heavy lifting. You should not do undifferentiated heavy lifting. This means that you should focus on the business problem. So as an enterprise, you should be focused on solving the problems of your enterprises and not really on solving technical infrastructure problems. An awesome approach there would be to actually delegate this to either your cloud provider or to other tools like Kubernetes. In this video, let's look at that journey in a little depth. So let's quickly review the challenges that we talked about with microservices. We talked that uh, with microservices, we would want to automate a lot of stuff so we would want a simplified deployment process for variety of technologies. It does not matter whether you have a Python example, uh, sorry, a Python microservice, a Node.js microservice, or a full stack application. You would want to deploy it the same way. So you'd want simplified deployment. The other th th thing which we talked about was the need for technical infrastructure. We talked about the fact that we need an API gateway, Spring Cloud Config Server, Distributed Tracing Server, and a lot of stuff which are more infrastructure which don't give you anything as a business, which are more technical infrastructure, which is kind of undifferentiated heavy lifting that we have to do. The other important challenge in the microservices architecture is to stay cloud neutral, right? So if you use a specific feature which is provided by AWS or GCP or Azure, then you are tied to that specific cloud. You want to remain as cloud neutral as possible. And we already talked about the fact that you don't want to do undifferentiated heavy lifting and therefore you don't want to deploy Spring Cloud specific stuff, infrastructure components into your cloud. So now let's look at some of the important solutions in this area. The number one solution in this specific area, let's probably use a different color for solutions. Let me try that. So let's pick up this orange color and let's say uh, the solutions are Docker. So the number one solution is Docker. What does Docker enable you to do? Docker enables us to package applications in the same way, irrespective of whether it's a Python application, whether, whether it's a Java application, whether it's a microservice, a web application, a full stack application, it doesn't really matter. You package it and it's ready for deployment. And the, from then on, the deployment procedure can be the same because it's a container. That's what Docker enables us. How does Docker really work? Um, you have your cloud infrastructure. So this is your cloud infrastructure. This can be, if we are talking about uh, AWS, it might be your virtual uh, EC2 instances or virtual machines in other clouds. So you have your cloud infrastructure on top of which there is a host OS. So the host operating system, all that you need to do to run a Docker container anywhere is just to install something called a Docker engine. So once you have a Docker engine installed, you'd be able to have a number of containers which would run on top of this. So that's what Docker enables. This can be your local machine. This can be something on the cloud, like a cloud specific solution like AWS Fargate, or it can be a cluster which is managed by Kubernetes. 
in all the places you can actually take the containers and deploy so it's a standard packaging thing which can be deployed anywhere so the most important thing about docker is that it does not have a lot of virtualization packs what is virtualization packs earlier when we had something called virtual machines uh, what have used to happen is we used to have two operating systems one is the host operating system and the other one is the guest operating system and because of this there was a small decrease actually not a small decrease it's a significant decrease in the performance of the virtual machines so let's say the underlying infrastructure has a power of 100 however your applications were only able to make use of like 60 or 70 out of it because you had two operating systems involved and there is a lot of communication that is happening with them the thing with docker is that virtualization tax is very very minimal so with minimum amount of your resources assigned to the underlying infrastructure you'd be able to easily run your docker containers the other interesting thing about docker is it provides perfect isolation for each of these containers so you can control how much of this container is available to the outside world and so it provides perfect security for you as we talked earlier this is cloud neutral packaging because this can work in aws this can work in docker sorry this can work in azure google cloud wherever you'd want and also this is language neutral because you can create a docker image for almost anything in this specific technology world so how does how do you create docker images Typically, you have your application code. This might be your Spring Boot application. This might be your Python application. What you do from this is you would actually create a Docker image. So you can use something called a Docker file, specify the instructions in there, and you can create a Docker image. And from the Docker image, you can actually go and you can actually take the Docker image and put it to something called a Docker registry. The default Docker registry is something called hub.docker.com. Each of the cloud providers also provide their own Docker registries. The container image registries are provided by each of these cloud providers as well. So if you are using one of these cloud providers, you can actually use the registries for, from that specific cloud provider as well. So once the application package, application Docker image is available in the registry, we, it's ready. It's ready for deployment. So that's the role of Docker. Docker enables us to create a platform neutral, an application framework neutral, an application language neutral uh, deployable unit. The next problem which comes in is we are talking about number of microservices as we discussed earlier. A lot of microservices and each one of these have multiple instances in production. And you want to make sure that they are monitored. Uh, you are you want to make sure that if an instance goes down, you bring in another new instance. So you'd want to do all that for your microservices and all the microservices are now built as Docker images. So they are all now containers. So you'd want something to manage these containers. These containers belong to multiple microservices and each of these microservices can have multiple instances. And that's why this process is called container orchestration so container orchestration is where you actually orchestrate the containers related to different microservices and manage a lot of different features around it there are a wide variety of container orchestrated con container orchestration solutions which are present docker swarm is one of the popular things kubernetes is one of the popular things and also there are cloud specific solutions as well so right now we'll look at a couple of them. One is AWS Fargate or AWS ECS Fargate. This is a cloud specific solution. So you cannot use ECS or Fargate outside AWS. The other option is to go with something called Kubernetes. The great thing about Kubernetes is that it's a cloud neutral solution. So once you are able to use Kubernetes to do container orchestration, you can easily switch from one cloud to the another. You can switch from AWS, let's say to Azure or Google Cloud or even into your own uh, data center back again. So that's what uh, the orchestration container orchestration tools allow. Uh, let's look at some of the features which are provided by all the container orchestration tools. 
So whatever container orchestration tools are present, they would typically provide all these features which are typically needed by all the uh, like microservices, which is service discovery. So you'd be able to do something similar to Eureka that we talked about earlier. So service discovery and also service registry. So you can actually register a service. So each of these microservices will register and another microservice can ask where is the specific microservice. So that's service discovery. Um, Kubernetes actually does load balancing by default. Uh, AWS, ECS and Fargate also like, can integrate with the AWS load balancer to do the load balancing. Uh, one amazing thing about both these is they are self-healing in the sense that if a container instance goes down, Kubernetes or AWS ECS Fargate would be able to detect that and actually bring another new instance up. So this is what is called self-healing. Uh, uh, like the one of the awesome features about Kubernetes is zero downtime deployments. So you can actually uh, do deployments with zero downtime. So you can move from re one release of a microservice to another release of a microservice with zero downtime. Uh, it enables a wide variety of releases in combination with Istio. Uh, you'd be able to do blue-green release, you'd be able to do canary deployments and a wide variety of deployments as well. And uh, the awesome thing about Kubernetes is that it's cloud neutral. The AWS ECS target solution is not a cloud neutral solution, but Kubernetes is a cloud neutral solution. Uh, each of the cloud providers have a solution for uh, Kubernetes on AWS. The solution is called EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service, I think something of that kind. On Azure, it's called AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service. On Google Cloud, Google Cloud Platform, it's called GKE, which is the Google Kubernetes Engine. So it's cloud neutral, so it's supported on all the uh, cloud platforms. I mean, any cloud platform you look at, it would have excellent support for Kubernetes. And the other important thing about Kubernetes is it supports configuration as well, support centralized configuration. Uh, the interesting thing about uh, AWS ECS and Fargate is it also supports uh, configuration through something called a parameter store. So it, AWS provides something called a parameter store, so you can do cent central configuration through that. One of the major differences between Kubernetes and going for a cloud specific solution is that you would be logged in. So if you go to AWS ECS Fargate or you would use uh, another cloud specific container orchestration solution, you would be logged in. However, with Kubernetes, if you are using it the right way, you will not be logged in. Now, how do these container orchestration things work? The way they work is they have a cluster. So you need to create a cluster. Uh, in the case of Kubernetes, the cluster would contain a number of nodes. So there would be something called a master node, which manages all the nodes, and you would have a number of nodes or worker nodes, which do all the work, which is where all your containers would be deployed to. And you need to tell Kubernetes, what are the container images to manage? And you need to tell Kubernetes, what is the configuration you would want? So I would want auto scaling. I would want these many instances of this container. Once you tell Kubernetes all this stuff, actually, I should have drawn something like this here. So K8S comes in here. So once you tell Kubernetes, this is the container image, this is the configuration, and this is the cluster, Kubernetes would manage the cluster, deploy the, manage everything. So it would take care of uh, deplo deploying the container images, creating containers of them, and deploying them to the nodes, making sure that they are always available, making sure that uh, if you have configured auto scaling, making sure that those are in place as well. So that's where Kubernetes makes it really, really easy to actually develop your microservices. Uh, I'm amazed with actually the power of Kubernetes. I mean, we have amazing courses which we have created where we talk in depth with hands-on examples around microservices, Docker, Kubernetes, all the stuff that we are talking about here. We have already like, done, uh, implemented this. Uh, in Google Cloud, so it's it's Docker. I mean, Docker and Kubernetes are an amazing combination for microservices architectures. So, in this video, we talked about wide variety of stuff related to microservices, Docker and Kubernetes. We talked about the challenges of microservices. We talked about how Docker helps the microservices architecture, and we talked about container orchestration. And after that, we talked about a cloud-specific solution, AWS ECS and Fargate, and we talked about a cloud-neutral solution, or actually. Uh, like cloud uh, independent solution, Kubernetes.
now one of the main differences between AWS ECS and AWS Fargate is in the case of AWS ECS you would need to manage the cluster so in AWS we call uh, the like we will not call them nodes these are EC2 instances that's what we would call them so in uh, ECS you would have a cluster with EC2 instances and you have to manage the cluster of EC2 instances but with Fargate you don't really need to worry about the cluster all that you need to tell is this, uh, this is the container image this is the configuration that I would want and AWS Fargate would automatically uh, manage the cluster for you. So that's kind of high level overview of a lot of stuff that we are talking about. The idea was to give you a big picture on everything. So I hope I was uh, successful at that. Uh, there are a lot of terminology that we made use of. So if it was a little confusing, make sure that you watch it again. Um, I think uh, like this is uh, in a sequence of videos that we are creating where we are talking about architecture evolution, where we started with web applications, REST API, full stack. We talked about microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. And now we are at microservices with Docker and Kubernetes. I hope you are having an interesting time watching all these videos. I hope you are liking them. So if you like these videos, if you like this effort, and if you'd want to create, if you'd want us to create more videos like this, do like and subscribe. So leave a feedback for us. Um, I'm uh, like thanks for all the love you showed for us until now and I'm sure I'll see you in another in 28 minutes video very very soon. One of the frequently asked questions for us is how do I become a full stack developer? How do I become a microservices developer? How do I learn the cloud? How do I become an expert on AWS? The amazing thing is we have learning paths built for each of these. And these learning paths contain what are the skills you would need? What is the learning path? How can you start? What can you do next? What can you do everything to achieve your goal? And also these learning paths contain videos and course recommendations with these things. You can find a link to these learning paths in the description of this particular video. And you can check out whichever learning path you would want. For example, the learning path 05 is the one which makes you an expert on AWS. So it has the recommended skills, it has the prerequisite skills, it has the recommended course path and also it has recommended preview courses. These are free courses you can do and also it has links to the other learning paths as well. We recommend you to make the best use of these learning paths to make sure that you stay ahead of the curve. Keep learning in 28 minutes. Until the next video, bye-bye.